This is One on One. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Louis Armstrong. 70 years old and here I am at the Waldorf Astoria. How'd I get so lucky? <laughs> I got stories on top of stories. I used to work for Al Capone. He walked right up to me and he said, boy, you playing in New York tomorrow night, you hear? The son of a bitch pull out this big revolver. And I say, oh, maybe I do open in New York. <laughs> He's not listening, but we are. Uh, John Douglas Thompson plays uh, Satchmo at the Waldorf, uh, at the West Side Theater upstairs at uh, 407 West 43rd Street. How you doing? Why weren't I'm you good. listening to that? Well, you know, I, I don't want to ruin my suspension of disbelief. Okay. I'm not Armstrong. I'm not Glazer. So if I see that sort of stuff, it kind of gets in my head. Then I say, that's what I look like? That's what I'm doing? <laughs> and then it kind of right. messes me up. So. Well, Non-artists look at artists and say, oh, how do they do it? Really? Um, so here we go. So this is a story mm -hmm. about uh, Louis Armstrong. Yes. And his manager, Joe Glazer. Yes. They had a, a fascinating relationship. You were just telling me before we got on the yeah. air. They met in? They met in the 30s, or I think early 30s, and remained together, uh, manager and client, until Glazer passed away in 1969. Right. And then Armstrong obviously passed away in 1971. But what's unique about their relationship is Armstrong had Glazer handle everything. Glazer even picked the musicians for the people that were going to be in the band and handled all the administrative stuff. All the business. Everything. So Armstrong could just show up and play. Because that's what he wanted it, to do. Is it relevant? And by the way, you play both parts in this yeah. play. For 90 minutes, you play all three parts. And the three parts are Glazer, Glazer are Louis Armstrong, and, and Miles, Miles Davis. Davis. Yes. Which I'm fascinated. You'll tell us the Miles <laughs> Davis piece in a second. Yeah. The fact that Glazer is white, mm -hmm. relevant to the story? Oh, yeah, very relevant to the story. Um, Terry Teachout, who wrote the play, really wanted to have the actor playing Armstrong cross the color barrier. And uh, Glazer, obviously, being a, a white uh, person, and he was Jewish, and Terry wanted me to cross that barrier and go back and forth between Armstrong and Glazer. But it is really interesting in just in the racial dynamics of what was going on with music and commerce at that time and what a jazz musician needed to have in order to be successful. And he needed that kind of a partnership. And Glazer was associated with the mob and Al Capone and that sort of stuff. And back in Chicago, if you were a jazz musician and you wanted to make it, you really needed to have an, uh, some sort of an alignment with these mobsters and these clubs in order to play. Yeah, people think like, oh, wow, you were connected to the mob in, in Chicago or New York, and, you, and you're thinking, that wasn't all that shocking. That was no. more common than people think. That was, I would think, certainly in the time in the 30s when Armstrong was coming up in Chicago, because right. he got there in like 1922. From there on into the 40s and maybe even to the 50s, mobs really controlled a lot of the South Side and the jazz clubs where the musicians needed to play, to be heard, mm. to build an audience, to build some sort of a following. But Miles Davis, yeah. who is this uh, <laughs> uh, amazing character, uh, character, amazing musician, right. um, whose public persona, brand, whatever, reputation, is so much different from Louis Armstrong. Yeah. How does he fit into this? Well, we wanted to have, it's very interesting, we didn't have, Arms, we didn't have Miles Davis in the play originally. He was kind of a character that was written in when we first started doing it up in the Berkshires. And we really wanted a detractor against Armstrong, a, a strong antagonist in the story. And Armstrong and Glazer, I mean, Armstrong and Davis are very different individuals. Davis was kind of a middle class, uh, grew up at a different time, uh, very aggressive, very pro-civil rights, very civil rights activist and in his music and in his persona. And Armstrong, from Davis's perspective, wasn't that. Davis, uh, was he not, Armstrong. quote unquote, black enough? Right, yeah, and I think uh, with, uh, with Armstrong, he came up in the vaudeville, he came out of a whole different era, it was a different generation. Was he referred to as an Uncle Tom? Yeah, certainly was. Which is uh, the worst thing that could possibly be said? Well, well, to, uh, well to, there to, are to, lots to, of terrible things To someone of his stature said. and a black musician, yeah, you know, to have that be a big part of his branding, for people to think of him in that way. But I also think it was a misguided understanding about Armstrong, particularly people didn't really understand. He came up in the whole vaudeville circuit and what musicians had to do in order to get along and stay alive uh, for that uh, purpose. And also what Armstrong did do with the civil rights movement. He did many things that were kind of under the radar uh, that people didn't know about that uh, the play 
illuminates and mm. helps people understand. Can we take a look at the second clip? Um, you can take a look at this. You're not going to look at it. <laughs> you're really not. Uh, All right. Well, we're going to do it. You okay. mind? Yeah, yeah, please Joe, do it. Please a, do this it. is Joe Glazer. Uh, this is Louis Armstrong's manager. Um, you play this role as yes. well, yeah. and I'm looking forward to seeing how you pull that off. Let's look, look at the clip. <laughs> We got to get him a white manager or he ain't going nowhere, no how. I sit him down and I say, look, Louie, you want to work for me? Here's the deal. Stop blowing your brains out every night playing all them goddamn high C's. Ain't no money in it. Told me where to play, told me who to play with. There's nothing I wouldn't do for Louie. Not a goddamn thing, understand? I'm Louie and Louie's me. Best friend I ever had. <laughs> Did it convince you? Did yeah, you believe absolutely. it? Okay. Absolutely. And, 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 and the Miles Davis mm. persona. Mm -hmm. I, I, what did that? Well, th there's a lot of Miles on YouTube. If right. You, you know, there's a was really that famous. Back, is that with his back to the audience? <laughs> <laughs> I'm and sorry. That's a good... No, no, no. That's no. right. <laughs> no, but there's a lot of, there's a 60 Minutes interview, yeah. which is really. Yeah. You know the piece that you want to see, and I was able to. Is study that with that. Mike Wallace? I think it, not Mike. It, yeah, I think it is with Mike Wallace. Is it Mike Wallace? Sorry, check that or Ed, Bra Ed Bradley. Yeah, it's yeah, either Ed one of the two. Okay, one of the two. But anyways, you can kind of see Miles, and you can kind of get uh, his vibe. And I'm a big Miles Davis fan. I got mm. all of his music, so I kind of knew about him. I knew more about him than Armstrong when I went into this project. So I was able to just look at the YouTube stuff and kind of get a good studying of him and, and, and get his voice, which is very much like a raspy whisper. I asked you before we got in here where you yeah. grew up and how you got here. Yeah. Tell folks. How I got to be an actor or how uh, I got to be this give, give us the, 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 okay. the route you took. To... The route that I took, I was born in Bath, England. I left when I was like two and a half years old, moved from Bath to Montreal, Canada. Lived there till I was about 10 and a half, 11, then from Montreal, Canada to Rochester, New York. And then and, from Rochester. Yeah, well, the love to, of acting to comes Brooklyn. in. To Brooklyn. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> the love of acting comes in when? Where? Um... I was actually in New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, I, have, I was going to go on a date. I had asked this young woman to go on a date with me. Um, to my surprise, she, said, she stood me up. I got to the theater, and anyways, and went to see the play by myself. And it was an August Wilson play called Joe Turner's Come and Gone. And I saw the play and immediately at that moment fell in love with acting and knew that that's what I wanted to do. How be. old were you? I was about 26, 27. That's when it happened? That's, uh, yeah, I've been acting since I was 29. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> of all the times I've asked that question, it's the latest that anyone said that it hit them. That they got into acting, really? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like when I was a kid, I knew. Right, the last right. person sat there said I was five. <laughs> <laughs> but they knew they wanted to be an actor when they were five. See? No, I mean, for me, I thought of acting as kind of a hobby, if anything. You know, I'd seen maybe one play prior to seeing the August Wilson show. And what was great about seeing that play was there were all these African Americans on stage mm. telling a story that related to me. Right. And so that made me really interested in the process and what acting was all about. Now, I didn't go into acting right away. It took me right. about six and a half, seven years to get to that point. But I knew that the seeds were planted from watching that performance. Uh, John Douglas. Thompson is in Satchmo at the Waldorf at the West Side Theater upstairs at 407 West 43rd Street. I want to thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Got it. Thanks. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Virtua, NJIT, New Jersey Natural Gas, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, TD Bank, and by the New Jersey Education Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.